make them able to talk to each other directly. We discovered that uh, GeoServer had a REST API, uh, which was allowing people to uh, communicate with it through uh, standard HTTP requests and methods like get, post, boot, or delete. So we decided to implement the same kind of functionalities on the top of Map Server to make it able to understand the same language. That's what we did with the Map Server REST API, MRA, which is not so good acronym. So because of uh, these API are, are the same, they can now uh, discuss each other with the same language and get married. <laughs> I'm going to explain you a little bit more about uh, Map Server REST API, but basically it's a, it's a tool which uh, allows you to configure Map Server services remotely, I mean, like you can do for GeoServer through the REST API. You can do the same uh, with the Map Server REST API. It allows you to use the same HTTP request for both Map Server and GeoServer, which can be interesting. So it allows you to build services management software system or whatever that don't rely on a single server backend, but that can com communicate with both of them if they are both installed or one of them or the other one if you want to change. The overall ar architecture of uh, Map Server REST API here is quite simple. Um, over the Map Server standard, uh, binaries, uh, you've got the plugin w which is built in Python. Uh, it uses the same map server configuration than the, the map file. It uses a, a map file, actually. Uh, it uh, communicates with it through Python map script. And it is open to a HTTP requests from the outside coming from a REST client. little bit of insight. Uh, Map Server REST API uh, has been built with uh, the lightweight Python framework uh, web.py, uh, which, which was excellent um, for dealing with uh, REST requests. So you, you can have those uh, old HTTP requests coming into it, and, and then uh, the Python code um, making the stuff work uh, into the map file. For a certain type of operation, like uh, getting the bounding box or in information about the raster file or whatever, uh, we are using to the, the Gellar and OGR Python bindings to discover a bit more about the data source. The main problem we had, the most difficult part, was to map exactly the GeoServer conceptual model from its API to the map server conceptual model, which is absolutely not the same, <laughs> obviously. So uh, the GeoServer uh, conceptual model is based on uh, workspaces, data stores, feature types, and coverage stores for rasters. And on, on the side of this, you got layers and layer groups and even styles. In map server, as you might know, uh, you have basically a, a map file, which is a service, and then you have layers, and in the layers, you have a data, and you have size. So it's completely different. What we have done I is to um, uh, define the, the workspace as the map file. So workspace is a map file, and inside it, we, we have a uh, little bit split uh, the layer conceptual approach in a, in a a data store approach, which is uh, roughly the beginning of a layer, the, the connection type and the data, and then the feature type, which uh, allows access to the data. So it will be the, the, the inside part of the data uh, structure of the map file. And then beside this, the, the styles, what can be added. So we are completely manipulating the map file through this conceptual model, which is the same thing as server. So examples, first 
you need to create a new workspace. If you don't have a scribe UI, for example, to, to build a map file, uh, you can use this. Uh, so you, you first have to declare a workspace, which will uh, make a map file. The workspace uh, contains data configuration, which will be used to configure layers. So you make uh, HTTP POST action on uh, your server MRA workspaces. And you just send this, uh, and it's just the name for the workspace, and it will create uh, my workspace.map file. So then, when you have this, uh, you have to uh, create a data store into that workspace. So you will do a, a post action on uh, your workspace just created, and on the data stores on, of your new workspace, which now exists, and explain uh, where, where to find the data, in which database, on which port, which host, uh, user, and so on. And as you can see, it is uh, exactly the same than the uh, data connection parameters in the map file. And after that, you have to declare the feature type for an existing table, because the data store is only a, co a connection to a database. So now, on your data store, you just created the step before, you, uh, you post to the feature types, the name of the feature type you want to, to use, which is the name of the table where your data are lo located. So this makes you a uh, workspace, a data store, and a uh, feature type, which is not enough in a geo server conceptual model uh, to make it available uh, as a layer. So now, uh, you make another post on layers, and you just tell it to use your previous dat data store and feature type and to publish it. And actually, at that point, it should work. So Map Server REST API, in short, it uh, lets you handle Map Server configuration using uh, HTTP URL and uh, HTTP methods, which can be handy. It uses XML or JSON uh, for machine-to-machine -machine communication and representation, and it has a pretty HTML format uh, for machine-to-humans exposure. Like you can see here, here uh, we are hitting uh, the, the root of the API, and it shows you the four main containers it has, so the workspaces, the layers, the styles, and the layer groups. And inside the workspaces, we are able, no, so, sorry, the so layers first. Inside the layers, we have a list of all available layers in all workspaces. And we can have the same thing in JSON. And then we can go to workspaces, name of workspaces, the data stores, Nottingham, and feature types, and have information about uh, the data used in this layer, title, the name, the series, and so on. And the results for same thing in XML. What is the future of uh, Map Server REST API? It's quite simple. Uh, for the moment, we we uh, we have stayed uh, very close to a Geo Seven model. And we know that to build a good map file, uh, you often need more options to configure uh, clearly your layer. So we want to add um, vendor-specific options to allow the transmission of map server-specific options and to, and to be able uh, to have a better control on the map file. And we want to enhance symbology and label support Actually, uh, it's, it's done uh, through SLD files, which can be uh, not so well interpreted uh, by map server, by map script, actually. And most of the time, the interpretation differs a bit from uh, geo server and map server for the same SLD file. So there are things to uh, fix there. And if you want to join us, we are on GitHub uh, with uh, a mail. MRA. But story is not finished. One more thing. 
as an example of implementation of the REST API, uh, as it is not something really uh, visible and usable uh, as, at start. Uh, we did a little QGIS plugin, uh, implementing both Geo Server and Map Server REST APIs to show you where it can go. It defines uh, a complete abstraction layer about both REST APIs, having uh, a standard control set and uh, backend specific options to be able to, to tweak a little bit the kind of publication you want to do. And so it, uh, it allows you to uh, switch painlessly and graphically from one backend to another. And it allows as well to generate map server map files just from scratch. Got a screencast about it. So here you see we have a standard QGIS 2.0 version. We load the plugin, we click on close, click on close, and we configure it. So we add a REST API for GeoServer and its URL. And I mean, uh, user and password. And this allows us to uh, discover. Oh, sorry, uh, the post didn't work so well. Uh, okay, I won't pause it. Yeah. So it has not a good behavior from uh, the PowerPoint. So add the plugin. Configure a first backend using GeoServer REST API, its URL. The little tweaks are to enhance the communication between the specific backend. And that's it. We retrieve the layers and the workspaces. There's one workspace. Nottingham sample, sample it has uh, three feature types and we add them to cart and end them to the map. So it asks for password to uh, get the connection to the database <coughs> because it's a direct connection from QGIS to the database. It doesn't go through a WMS or WFS stream. And we close it and sorry, it went a little bit fast, but once you have a data there, it's a native QGIS connection to data, then you, you can style them differently and send them back to Map Server by just configuring uh, another backend. publish it to that backend. We're choosing here the layers we want to publish to map server. So of course for the OpenStreetMap layers it doesn't work. But for the visible layers uh, it can do the job. We choose a workspace to create into map server. We're checking the names of a store to be created. For all of the layers we want to publish, verifying it, it, it goes in the correct data store, and all layers were published in Map Server. So now we got this in, MR, in, in the API, so we can see our new layers here, which are, have just been added. Three feature types for three layers. With the styles as associated to them. It's an SLD file and we can open this file to the text editor and, and see it's an SLD file. And 
obviously, if it is in map server and if map server is uh, correctly configured, we can connect to it through WMS and find all layers and add them to the map as now WMS layers and not standard QGIS connections. So you see the style is not exactly the same. It has changed a bit, but uh, not, a, not as much uh, as we would like it. So that was a screencast. I don't know how to get out of there. Hmm? Oh, yeah, here. Cool. So the future of the plugin uh, will be to add more configuration options, depending a little bit more on the back end, on the back end to be used. Uh, with allowing to set vendor specific options uh, for each backend and even more to, to tell. That's the end of the story. Thank you. If you have questions. What license is it? Is it a GPL or something? Uh, G GPL 3, yeah. It's not completely fixed yeah. yet, yeah, you know. Yes. So when you use the API on the Jesus plugin, is it like as clear as the features are, or is it just the style that's different? It's not on, on your style, it's, um, uh, it doesn't import the data. It, uh, it transmits <coughs> uh, references of the data. So both your, your client side and your server side must be able to connect to the data. That's it. Yeah. Maybe we could push the data as well. Uh, the GeoServer REST API allows you uh, to push shape files. So we did the same for shape files. But it doesn't allow you to retrieve shape files. So we didn't do it yet. Uh, maybe it could be a, a specific option for the maps of a backend. Yeah, obviously, uh, obviously, I, I don't think it, it would be reasonable to to build uh, a full interface to all uh, the stylish map server options. Uh, the map file is getting uh, more and more complicated or sophisticated, maybe, uh, with all the, the 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 cool stuff we have seen before, the the complex style and so on. Uh, I don't think it would be reasonable uh, to think one could control uh, from this kind of API, the, this kind of renderer. Uh, but actually, uh, it has two goals. Uh, it allows um, other clients to communicate e easily with Map Server. It's, it's the main topic. We, we first built it uh, with the need to publish geodata from uh, Geo Network. Uh, it was feas feasible uh, with Geo Server through the REST API, and so we uh, built it with this first focus, and, and then we extended it to uh, op other matters. Right. Sure. Yeah. It would be a good idea. Okay, we'll do it. Thank you. Yes, then. You mentioned uh, Go Network as a possible client to feature VR. Yes. Uh, are you aware of other uh, species in the Geo Server world that are using the API that would benefit, you know, that MapServer users would benefit? No, from actually, I'm not aware of it. That's the only mm. one. So, even in the Geo Server world, it's not that widely. Uh, uh, there must be plenty of things in the Geo Server world I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Anyone, I in guess. The room? Anyone in the room may know some clients dealing with a GeoServer REST API, maybe, <laughs> other than GeoNetwork. Because that's obviously already useful. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know there's a huge resurgence of that in 
Yeah, in a in a for OpenGL Suite four and something. Yeah. Okay. Bondless, sorry. Yeah. But do you know if it communicates with Joe Server through the REST API or? or yeah. That should be good. Yeah. So it'll be a, a boundless QGIS plugin, which will enable you to manipulate a map files. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and QGIS would, would be part of this. It's, it's written on the boundless paperboard. Uh, big plans, you know. <laughs> big business, big industry. <laughs> what? QGIS? Not, <laughs> not yet. Uh, <laughs> Okay, no more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.